What the fuck is good, y'all? Saberwolf94 for a grand video. Gonna tell you what, in my opinion, are the top 10 best sets of all time. And by all time, I mean as of this video. But this is still some epic shit. It should go without saying, but I had a fucking agonizing time to make this list, with all the busted, strong, and impactful sets we've had over the years. And they're going to be amazing sets that you won't see. It's tough for me too. But we only got 10 slots, and I feel like these are the strongest, most impactful Pokemon sets from 1996 to 2017. Now, there are going to be some fucking rules, of course, as well as the criteria for why the sets were chosen and given their rank. Pure reprint sets that don't have any new cards are excluded. There are only two sets of this type, both from way, way back, Base Set 2 and Legendary. Honestly though, most reprint sets with new cards too weren't all that crazy, so don't be surprised if you don't see any. All gens and eras will be represented to some extent. For example, Heart Gold Soul Silver Era had four sets if we exclude the weak ass yet lovely Call of Legends set, so at least one of the busted sets from that has to make the list. It's more than broken though, I assure you. Sets will be judged on their respective eras, otherwise this list would just be most of the latest sets. Direct reprints such as DCE, VS Seeker, Enhanced Hammer, etc. will be taken into account for sets given the time of their release, but won't be included as part of notable cards. The criteria of the best are going to be, but not limited to, the dominance and impact of the set in the game, the longevity of the set's relevance and impact in the game and following formats with newer sets, sets will be judged by how rich they are with good cards from every rarity, but incredibly meta-popular standalone cards can help a set even if they're not as rich as other power sets. How rich the set is with tournament recurring cards, or how meaningful its tournament recurring cards were. How the sets changed the way we built or thought about building decks. How flexible and versatile a lot of the cards could be in decks. Its impact in the history of the game. If the set includes cards that were so overwhelming, it forced the Pokemon company to outright ban them, which isn't a very common occurrence. These are going to be the main factors for my decisions, but at the end of the day, you might look at this and have a different opinion. Oh shit, here we go. Number 10, X and Y. X and Y really evolved the Pokemon TCG into the TCG of this era, with cards like Energy Search evolving into Professor's Letter, and Plus Power becoming the metagame defining card, Muscle Band. Unlike the unoriginal Breaks and 5th generation's big basic EXs, it introduced a more original mechanic with Mega Evolution, or as I like to call them, Mega Form Pokemon, but most importantly introduced Fairy Pokemon and did it with a bang, giving the Fairy Pokemon in there just about anything they could ever want. Aromatisse's ability of moving fairy energies around was a crucial part in most fairy decks, and even non-fairy decks, and the same can be said with the basic Xerneas energy acceleration attack. You could get very creative with these cards and use them in all sorts of decks, but even going the obvious route, they were good. No doubt the biggest contributors to this set's power would be Evil Tolly X and Muscle Band though. While Evil Tolly X's Evil Ball might look like a pussy compared to Gardevoir GX, this card had remained a top attacker for years to come, and it doesn't even need to evolve like Gardevoir. With the help of the basic Evil Tall and all the other amazing dark partners and support, all the success of these decks speaks for itself. I cannot emphasize the impact of Muscle Band though. A general card any Pokemon can use that does damage, that 20 extra damage brought the game in an era of aggression of a whole new level. One hit KOs were easier than ever, and this card boosted the vitality of a number of cards. And who can forget the impact of Trevenant? For its incredible ability, this Pokemon was incredibly stellar in general, sporting a great attack, HP, and a resistance. And has been a top face of item lock, I don't think we can forget. This set also includes Raichu, which was a very playable Pokemon in its own right, especially in the Skyfield days, and the set has other great gems like Delphox. X and Y set the tone for how Pokemon TCG is played today, and was in better light than the half-assed transition from DP to black and white. Notable cards include Delphox, Lapras, Raichu, Trevenant, Evil Tall, Evil Tall EX, Aromatisse, Xerneas, Xerneas EX, Fairy Garden, Shadow Circle, Professor's Letter, and Muscle Band. Number 9, Roaring Skies and Guardians Rising. Alright, so if you know me, you know that there's going to be one tie in my top 10. Maybe not always, but it happens. 
Originally, I wasn't going to include any 7th generation Sun and Moon sets at all, because the era hasn't finished yet. It's not even halfway through, in fact. But I feel like these sets are the same in their most defining factor as what makes them what they are. Shea Mini X and Tabulele GX. Before I talk about these cards though, I want to talk about these sets in general. To be frank, Roaring Skies, while I love this set, being part of the Oras trilogy, besides a few cards, it's actually a weaker set than X and Y, and even sets from the honorable mentions. Of course, the impact of Skyfield and Mega Rayquaza is huge, and it has some good general cards like Trainer's Mail, which became a staple, but really what contributes so much in its rank is same in EX. This one card took the game by storm, changing how players build their consistency skeletons, with heavy focus on this card and slightly less focus on supporters. In conjunction with cards like Ultra Ball, you could go through your deck lightning fast in a manner we probably haven't seen since the Haymaker days. While in my humble opinion the card was very overrated, I cannot deny its impact. With a demand we probably didn't see ever before, excluding Dark Explorers perhaps, Roran Skies went out of print so quickly, all likely because of this card, and the Pokemon Company actually reprinted another wave of this set to counter this. It was so bad, Roran Skies booster boxes had prices rivaling older sets from years ago. Guardians Rising is a similar, but not exact case. For starters, Guardians Rising is a much better overall set when it comes to good cards than Roran Skies, in my opinion, and I think Tapulele GX is a much better card, completely deserving of the hype. Like Shaman EX was, Tapulele is the most sought after card right now because of its usefulness and utility, going for crazy high prices online that may very well cause Guardians Rising to end up like Roaring Skies. The reason it's a tie though is because it's too early to tell what's gonna go down this era, and I really thought this was a neat way to represent Sun and Moon as well. I otherwise wouldn't have included Sun and Moon sets probably. For what it's worth though, these two cards are what push these sets in iconic status and Pokemon set history, and I think many people would agree that's what makes a set memorable. Maybe you guys thought these sets would be higher on this list, but you'll see why they're right on the spot they are soon. Notable cards include Shedinja, Absol, Altaria, Rayquaza EX, Mega Rayquaza EX, Mega Turbo, Skyfield, Trainer's Mail, Wally, Winona, Double Dragon Energy. And for Guardians Rising, Golisopod, Turnator GX, Alolan Vulpix, Tapu Koko GX, Garbodor, Tapulele GX, Lycanroc GX, Sylveon GX, Metagross GX, Rayquaza, Trampa GX, Oricorios, Ultra of the Sun and Moon, Aether Paradise, Aqua Patch, Brooklet Heal, Choice Band, Field Blower, Rescue Stretcher. Number 8, Platinum. All of the Platinum SP sets had cards that played a big role during the SP era. Whether they were few or not, Rising Rivals, Supreme Victors, and Arceus had a fair share of key cards, but I have to say the original Platinum set is the most important. Not only did it introduce the SP mechanic, but it has most of the important cards needed for the SP engine, as well as notable SP Pokemon that were stables in SP decks, and cards like Crobat G would even be used in non-SP decks as well. Palkia G level X, while not as dominant as Luxray G level X or Garchomp C level X, was a top deck for its format, but most importantly, the Alga G level X managed to be almost as consistent of a top SP card as Luxray with all this powerful disruption. And in general, the set is littered with fantastic Pokemon and trainers that supply in so many decks. Hell, Team Galactic's invention, Power Spray, was an iconic card acting like a Yu-Gi-Oh hand trap something we only saw in that era, with the only other card to my knowledge doing something like this, being a Lakazam from Mysterious Treasures. I could spend two hours talking about all the cool Pokemon besides the one already mentioned, and all the cool trainers, but if you're familiar with the era, you know how big of an impact the SP engine had. Crobat G isn't no muscle band, Dialga G isn't no Shimini X or Tabulele GX, but this set is a rich, complete set with fantastic cards all over the place besides the impact of the SP engine, and that's why it really is easily stronger than all of the previous sets, and in fact, would even outclass number 7 if it wasn't for one card. When it comes to generally fantastic ass sets, you really can't go wrong with Platinum. Notable cards include Ampharos, Blaziken, Delcaddy, Dialga G, Dialga G Level X, Gardevoir, Giratina, Manectric, 
Palkia G, Palkia G Level X, Weaval G, Bliss C, Bronzong G, Crobat G, Honchro G, Shuppet, Broken Time Space, Cyrus's Conspiracy, Memory Berry, Miasma Valley, Galactic HQ, Pokemon Rescue, Energy Gain, Poketurn, Shaman Level X. Number 7, Phantom Forces. Even though this set is cool at its core, I have to be honest and say it brought a lot of bullshit in the game. Some would say for better, some for worse. While blatantly bringing and improving a lot of mechanics and abilities from the past, it introduced new cards that brought a whole new meaning to Broken. As soon as I saw Battle Compressor, from my experience as a Yu-Gi-Oh player, I knew that shit would go down, and the Night March deck went from a cool gimmick to a real and crazy deck dishing out 180 damage like it was nothing. It was really something at least the Pokemon community hadn't experienced before, and there were all sorts of mixes. Plasma Flareon got a boost, and Vespiquin from Ancient Origin also joined the Battle Compressor party. Filled with amazing EX Pokemon in Mega Forms, this set gave birth to so many decks and strategies, it was one hell of a power set. Thanks to Robo Substitute and even Wobbuffet, Donphan gained dreamlike support, it wasn't even funny, the pain in the ass that deck could be. If all this wasn't enough, this set is the home of a card that would eventually get banned, a quite uncommon occurrence, Lysander's Trump Card. Ironically, professional and iconic player Karl Sukovic didn't even think the card was very good, and who could blame him? Nobody expected the shitstorm that happened after Roaring Skies came out. Regardless, this was a card that eliminated the decking out concept, and a game reset like that would eventually find all sorts of ways to be exploited, shaming EX with Ultra Balls or not. Note, this was also the first set to bring Spirit Links into the game, and the Team Flare tools that you would attach your opponent's Pokemon Nix for disruption. That actually impacted the way we played Expanded, as now Toolscrapit had married over Startling Megaphone during that time. Mega Gengar is a fitting mascot for this set, for when you see it, you should definitely experience horror from its power. Notable cards include Manectric EX, Mega Manectric EX, Golbat, Crobat, Gengar EX, Mega Gengar EX, Wobbuffet, Malamar EX, Bronzong, Dialga EX, Heatran, Aegislash EX, Florges EX, Slurpruff, Hydreigon, AZ, Battle Compressor, Dimensional Valley, Headringer, Jamming Net, Lysandra's Trump Card, Robo Substitute, Spirit Links, Steel Shelter, Trick Coin, Night March Bitches. Number 6 Boundaries Crossed. If there's one set that can surpass a general powerhouse of good cards and support from Phantom Forces, is a set that includes top Pokemon that were relevant for almost fucking forever, and trainers are with a staple of staples. Now, I fucking love Dark Explorers, would take that set any day over this, but that set was too central on a specific theme, and boundaries crossed gave significance in so many ways. The introduction of Aspect cards was a hell of a significant new mechanic, it also can't be ignored that the first on its card list could arguably be the best. Computer Search is really the Joker card of Pokemon for a double discard, and while I will say that Gold Potion is a fantastic card that is certainly more suited for certain decks, I run the card in my Primal Kyoko decks without a second thought, come on, it's fucking Computer Search. Fucking Computer Search. One of the strongest original trainers, this card model was also incredible, and could make Tapu Lele GX and Shaman GX look like pathetic excuses for utility stables. One should not forget that Scarlet was introduced in this set as well. While not quite a joker like Computer Search, this card could still get the job done. Its impact is more subtle than Juniper or N. It was never on the level of those cards, since it only grabbed one card, but honestly, if it wasn't for Skyla, whatever impact Stage 2 Pokemon made after Rare Candy's weakening would have probably never existed. Rare Candy is really probably the most significant card Skyla searched. Landorus CX from this set was a hell of a Pokemon that would just not stop being good. For years this card was topping, and you could say it's the first Pokemon that comes to mind when you think of strong energy. From other top Pokemon like Blastoise, and the utility of board control with Keldeo CX's Russian ability, I'm sure you realize what an important tech he was for years. But the final touch comes in the form of two Stage 2 Pokemon, Dusknoir and Flygon. Dusknoir especially having one of the strongest and most game-breaking abilities in Sinister Hand, an ability that if executed right along with the right support cards makes it almost impossible for your opponent to counter. 
All these Pokemon have competitive success all around, and with cards like Computer Search and even Skyla that make this set their home as well, it's pretty reasonable to say that this was the strongest general standalone black and white set, and we're likely going to be seeing and using cards in this set in Expanded for more years to come. Notable cards? Charizard, no I'm just fucking with you, Squirtle, Blastoise, Keldew EX, Dusknor, Landorus EX, Flygon, Skyla, Computer Search, Gold Potion, Celebi EX. Number 5, Hard Gold Soul Silver. <laughs> oh boy, it's time to get into some real heavy shit with this one. Like the Platinum sets, if I exclude Undaunted and Call of Legends, both Unleashed and Triumphant are strong sets with numerous impactful Pokemon and trainers, but in the end it probably comes down to Triumphant and Hard Gold Soul Silver. Even so, no matter how I look at it, the original Hard Gold Soul Silver set is the best of the Legacy series. While not first released in this set, Double Colorless Energy's fucking re-arrival in this set, after so many years, is so impactful, it might as well be counted as an original card from this set. It was thanks to this card that Lux Chomp was pushed to its untouchable status during those formats, and in general, this card is a factor when deciding the usefulness of a Pokemon. Is it DC compatible? If yes, that's a plus. I'm a firm believer, and I don't think I'm the only one, that thinks that if this card wasn't released back then, the format could have been much different. The release of Hard Gold Soul Silver was so impactful just from this card, that it might as well have set the format in stone when DC was released. While this is no doubt the biggest reason for this set's impact, it is by no means the only crazy card, oh hell no. Heart Gold Soul Silver was the gateway for Primes, which honestly isn't anything special mechanic wise, but this set includes some of the most powerful and revolutionary attackers we've ever seen. Donphan's 1 for 60 attack was a revolution, while also sporting a fantastic body and stats all around. In a similar vein, Jumplump was a killer in disguise as a cute harmless grass Pokemon. For Alligator and especially Typhlosion had a big impact later on too, and this fucking set is top dog in the trainers department too. An all new Professor Oak's new theory, along with Pokemon Collector and Pokemon Communication, these cards were fantastic generic support for any deck. Seriously, people are so happy that Cynthia is getting reprinted with Professor Oak's new theory effect. Same effect, still great. Along with other cards like Ninetales and Cleffa, this set, like Platinum, is similar, but it's one of the more complete sets on its own. It almost seems crazy that this set is only number 5, but the big boys after this are even crazier. Notable cards include Jumpluff, Ninetales, Raichu, Cleffa, Pichu, Sunflora, Dunsparce, Copycat, Fisherman, Pokemon Collector, Pokemon Communication, Professor Oak's new theory, and all 6 primes. Number 4, EX Delta Species. Out of the big original EX era, with 16 sets our biggest TCG era, I only picked one set for this list, and it isn't because those sets were shit. In my humble opinion, I believe that, for the most part, the original EX era was the most balanced creative freedom friendly era, and that, bar a few cards and sets here and there, the sets are evened out nicely. This set, EX Delta Species, is the big exception, and why it stands out so much in that era. It stands out for many reasons actually. Like the name of this set, Delta Species Pokemon was the theme of this set, and for following sets after this. They were Pokemon that were a completely different type for what they normally would be, and in the beginning they were dual type with metal. Cool, right? Like SP Pokemon, these Pokemon had a lot of exclusive support, and just like Platinum, this set respectively was the beginning of it all. Of course this isn't the real reason this set is so high on this list. It is of course because it includes a Guardi Gallade Lux Chomp duo in the same set, and that is Dragonite and Metagross. The deck Meta Knight formed from these two cards was a force to be reckoned with, outclassing other would-be meta decks by a big margin. Compared to Secret Wonders though, this set was a step up, and it was a rich, powerful set, Meta Knight or not. This set also includes a Gardevoir print of its own, with fantastic attacks and a powerful power. From Tyranidar, Salamence, and Mewtwo, these were Pokemon that could dish out a lot of damage while having Delta Species exclusive support. This set also included the Holon Energy concept, Pokemon that could be played as special energy as well, and that also had a huge impact in the game. From fantastic support Pokemon like Porygon 2 and Amazing Trainers, this set probably shaked the EX era metagame more than any other set. 
Almost every Pokemon in this set has some sort of body or power covering an array of effects from putting damage counters in between turns, grabbing energy from the deck, not to mention the World Championship evolutions in this set. If there's one EX set to rule them all from that era, is this one. Notable cards include Crobat, Dragonite, Espeon, Gardevoir, Latias, Latios, Marowak, Metagross, Mewtwo, Rayquaza, Salamence, Starmie, Tyranidar, Umbreon, Holland's Electrode and Holland's Magneton, Porygon 2, Sandslash, Holland's Magnemite and Holland's Voltorb, Holland Farmer, Holland Lass, Holland Mentor, Holland Research Tower, Holland Researcher, Holland Ruins, Holland Scientist, Holland Transceiver, Flareon EX, Jolteon EX, Vaporeon EX. Number 3 Neo Genesis Jason Klesinski would probably kick my ass for not putting this at number 1, given what it brought to the game at a time of hell, but I believe it's right at this spot. For starters, this set includes not one, but two cards that eventually got banned in the modified format. I recommend you check out Jason Klesinski's fantastic articles about those formats, but yeah, Sneasel was a satanically strong Pokemon, capable of damage output years before its time, the fucker didn't even have a weakness on top of its fantastic stats. It was really the great basic Pokemon to end great basic Pokemon. It's up to you if you want to count Slokin, given he was mistranslated, but both cards left an impact nobody can ignore. This set lives up to its name of Genesis, as this was a savior set, despite Sneasel and Slowking being here. Before Neo Genesis, the game had some serious hand rape that could make the worst Yu-Gi-Oh formats look good if you also play Yu-Gi-Oh. The baby Pokemon Cleffa came and changed all that, and in general, the baby Pokemon were a serious thing back then, believe it or not. From metagame kings like Feraligatr, and additions of special dark and metal energy in the game, this is one of the most revered sets by players who know their shit. From great trainers, special energies, solid in general Pokemon lines, if you don't understand how amazing this set really is, then I don't know what to tell you. It was easily the most impactful Generation 2 set, and cards like Cleffa, Recycle Energy, and other cards were staples of utmost importance and relevance from the time the set was out until the very end of its legality. The only reason this set is a number one is because the two other sets here are just the heart and soul of Pokemon TCG sets for me. As far as legendary sets go though, there is almost no competition for Neo Genesis. Notable cards include Feraligators, Meganium, Pichu, Slowking, Steelix, Typhlosions, Metal Energy, Cleffa, Magby, Markrow, Sneasel, Eco Gym, Focus Band, Poke Gear, Super Energy Retrieval, Goldberry, Professor Elm, Double Gust, Super Rod, Recycle Energy, Dark Energy. Number 2 Base Set. <laughs> I'm sure it must be surprising for a lot of you that I include Base Set not only on this list, but so high as well. But this foundation set is arguably the strongest and most impactful and one of the most important aspects of the Pokemon TCG. Trainers Trainers are a huge part in our DEX's consistency, and trainers have a lot of one of strong effects. There is no competition with base set. Unlike other TCGs like Yu-Gi-Oh, where they got more crazy as time went on, Pokemon started crazy, and you can thank the rules and these trainers for that. Some experienced players could say it was mostly because of the rules that the early game was how it was. But honestly, just about every trainer in this set has a power standard that's been a staple in our game since then. I think it's crucial to note that the original Rain Dance Blastoise comes in this set, and that's another important aspect of this set's impact. I could talk about Haymaker as well, but since this was the first set ever, I think it would be missing the point to talk about the best deck, coming from the first set when there was no other competition. Really the most important thing about this set is how it shaped our game with its trainers and setting the standard for what a good trainer is. There is no doubt in my mind that ignoring something clearly subjective, like nostalgia, base set is one of the most impactful Pokemon sets, whether it was the first set or not. Countless cards from sets that came after it couldn't shine as long as the trainer engine in base set was around, all the way to the second generation sets. If you want a nickname for this set, go with Trainer Base Set. Notable cards Alakazam, Blastoise, Hitmochan, Venusaur, Electabuzz, Dugong, Clefairy Doll, Computer Search, Devolution Spray, Item Finder, 
Lass, Pokemon Breeder, Pokemon Trader, Scoop Up, Super Energy Removal, Energy Retrieval, Plus Power, Pokemon Center, Professor Oak, Bill, Energy Removal, Gust of Wind, Switch, Double Colorless Energy. Before I unveil my number one, which I'm sure you're all curious about, I want to talk about honorable mentions. Burning Shadows and Secret Wonders have a few things in common. They include True Powerhouse Gardevoir cards, and Secret Wonders had Gallade too. Gardegallade's impact was incredible, and that's putting it lightly, but the overall set wasn't good enough compared to X and Y. It needed a little more going for it to rival all the impactful cards in X and Y. EX Delta Species does what that set did better as well, including a hell of a duo, but the set was rich and more impactful overall. Same for Burning Shadows, as it lost the Guardian's Rising as well. Dark Explorers isn't necessarily a weaker set than Boundaries Cross, but it was centered around too much on Darkrai and Dark Support, while Boundaries Cross had top stable cards, Computer Search and Skyla. Dragons Exalted also lost by a hair to X and Y as well. EX Fart and Leaf Green and Unseen Forces are not quite honorable mentions, but they were too some of the stronger sets in the EX series. And now for number one. It was a pretty easy pick to be honest, if not the easiest. Number one, Stormfront. If base set is the pinnacle of trainers, then Stormfront is the equivalent set for Pokemon. This set is so powerful and so relevant that if you were to remove it from its era, then the whole DP metagame would shift upside down. If there were any Pokemon that gave SP a run for their money, they were likely in this set. And quite frankly, this is such a powerful set compared to other DP sets. It brought a clear power creep when it was released, in a similar vein to EX Delta Species, littered with almost every best non-SP attackers, and for fuck's sake even has Trainer Stable Luxury Ball, which is the A-Spec equivalent for Master Ball, and a solid special energy support in the form of Cyclone and Warp Energy. The level X's in that set admittedly were not as relevant, but they were incredibly solid for their format, it's just that shit got real when SP became a thing. The Pokemon in this set also fucked you up in the most different ways. Machamps' effect to knock out any basic Pokemon like it was nothing would probably be a banner-worthy effect in an older or newer era. Gyarados was one of the most unique decks the way it's set up, and also famous for fucking you up with no energy to attack. Sableye was a deadly little fucker that had such a huge impact in the game, and all the cards mentioned, among others like Gengar, are legendary rich with competitive success. You can tell the power creep from looking at cards like Bibarel, the first Pokemon to be able to do 2 for 60 no costs attached, and cards like Salamence, Electrode, Magnezone, Gengar, and others that had multiple prints in the era, had their best print in Stormfront, many can argue. There is nothing negative I can say about this set's strength, honestly. It's too strong, actually. That's a flaw, I guess. Looking at the list of all the cards in this set, it really is just so strong. For what it has contributed, changing the way we played, flipping the game around with its array of Pokemon, and its overall dominance and impact, I can casually and easily deem Diamond and Pearl Stormfront the strongest Pokemon set of all time. Well, as of this video, anyway. We'll probably never get a set like this, though. It was really something else. And, if you want the biggest proof, this set includes the Secret Rare Charizard remake and its evolution line. Biggest proof right there. I'm obviously joking, of course. Or am I? Notable cards include the Dusknors, Magnezones, Sepatile, Abomasnow, Bronzong, Cherim, Triflim, Gengar, Gyarados, Machamp, Salamence, Bibarel, Electrode, Sableye, Ghastly, Conductive Quarry, Luxury Ball, Pokedrawer, Cyclone Energy, Warp Energy, Dusknor Level X, Heatran Level X, Machamp Level X, Raichu Level X, Regigigas Level X. Yo, this was an amazing video to make, I'm really proud of. Thank you guys so much for watching, and be civil with the Hayden. It wasn't easy to decide this sets, and I left out a lot of personal favorites as well. Motherfucking Saberwolf94, what's up?